Hello and welcome back to another exciting episode of Solar Professor. And I'm your Solar Professor, Steve Geiger. Today we're going to continue our journey through preparing for the NABCEP exam. And today's topic is, the um, again, what you need to know. And today we're going to be covering the IV curve. So let's go ahead and dive right in and get started. So I've got a couple learning objectives here. First one is an understanding of the IV curve, of course. And then uh, we have a few uh, NABCEP sample problems to, uh, to take a look at as well. All right, basically what we've got here is the IV curve. And IV stands for I for current. Um, I is intensity uh, and or current. And then of course V is uh, voltage on here. And so that's where we get the IV. So uh, current side and then voltage side here uh, at the bottom couple of things to note on the IV curve, especially if you're going to be taking the NABCEP exam, you really want to have an understanding of what this is showing us here. Okay? These images here, by the way, that I'm using are from our book, uh, Photovoltaic Systems from Jim Dunlop. Um, again, fantastic book. If you're going to be taking the NABCEP exam, I highly encourage reading through the whole thing. Um, many of the questions on the NABCEP exam are derived from the information from that very book. Uh, all right, so uh, let's take a look at everything on here. We'll start over here on the um, current side. And so what we have up there is ISC, and that is short circuit current. Um, remember to understand the abbreviations. So short circuit current being ISC, maximum power current being IMP right there. Uh, what the short circuit current is, is it's obviously the maximum point up here on the IV curve for current but it's also a situation where it's uh, current under no load. Uh, so it's, it's the top of the top. It's not, nothing's going to be happening in that position really. Okay? Over here we have maximum power current. Um, and I'll talk about that uh, in just a moment. But you can see where this is going. It's ending up here at the knee of the IV curve here. Uh, moving on down here, uh, let's look at the voltage uh, side of it, which is on the bottom. <coughs> We have maximum power voltage, or VMP, right there. Uh, again, these two right here create a product which happens to be the maximum power point. I'll talk about that in just a second. And then the last one here on the IV curve is the uh, VOC, or open circuit voltage. This is a situation where we are at infinite voltage, and there is no uh, current. And in fact. You can see where these are. There's going to be no voltage on this side, and in this particular spot, there's no current on this side either. Okay? Um, here, they are coming together, the, the uh, max power current and the max power voltage, to create the maximum power point, and that's exactly what it is. It's, it's typically the knee of the IV curve, and so that basically breaks it down, what, what you're seeing on an IV curve. Uh, you want to have them memorized, you want to have the uh, initials uh, and abbreviations memorized uh, as well for the uh, NABCEP exam. Alright, let's take a look at the IV curve in action. Um, I like this over here because what this is showing us is what happens under certain uh, irradiance effects. Um, in particular, we'll notice, and this is how a solar panel, let me grab it here, um, this is how a solar panel works, basically. Okay, so we have our solar panel here. When it is um, not exposed to much light, voltage tends to remain constant, and you can see that right here. Voltage is not changing very much here, no matter how much light it's being exposed to. Um, this is a minimal amount of watts per meter squared. We can measure watts per meter squared. I mentioned it in one of the other videos that we've done with the. Um, irradiance meter here, okay, and the irradiance meter tells us exactly, um, you know, what's happening with the, with the sunlight at any specific given moment when we turn it on. Um, you'll notice what happens when there is more irradiance happening, and um, for those of you who have seen my video on standard test conditions, we know that a thousand watts per squared is the one that everything is really measured by. <clears throat> That's what we're looking for we can see what happens at a thousand watts per meter squared. It significantly changes the amount of current here. 
So between a lower uh, amount of light intensity and a higher amount of light intensity, you can see what happens to the knee of it at the maximum power point. This is particularly important to understand. Uh, voltage, again, really not changing much. However, when current um, changes, that really increases the power production of the uh, system, of the uh, solar module in particular. Uh, and so that's very important for us to uh, note and understand here. Uh, this is showing a very similar uh, type of situation as well. Um, also, just to let you guys know, and you, you already know this from my other videos, this uh, particular uh, PowerPoint slide set is available as a PDF file on my website, and that is um, solarprofessor.info. Okay, and you can go there and uh, download it under the instruction section. All right, continuing on. Uh, oops. I went backwards. Okay. Continuing on here. Uh, this is a really important for us to understand as well for the NAPSEP exam. What is happening with temperature? I particularly remember some of the questions on the NAPSEP pointing out there may be uh, <clears throat> really cold conditions or snow conditions or high altitudes that, are, that have cold conditions, things like that. Um, Right here is what happens on the IV curve during a temperature response. And I really love these, these uh, particular IV curve diagrams here from the Jim Dunlop book because it really showcases, especially with the colors, uh, what's going on in particular with, the, with these temperatures here. Let's read through this because I really want you to understand it. In the book, it actually says this, but I always like to point out what the inverse of it is. All right, so again, Let's read it. Increasing cell temperature decreases voltage, slightly increases current, and results in a net decrease in power. So, it's saying increasing cell temperature. So what's happening is it's getting red right here. You can see what happens. Um, doesn't do a whole lot to the current, but it is significantly changing the voltage. That's, that's uh, interesting. As opposed to the previous slide, we looked at the light intensity really affects current. Okay, so we're talking about temperatures here. Um, so read that a couple of times to make sure you really get it down. Inversely, what happens is decreasing cell temperature. So um, you can see it's starting to get blue as it gets colder. Right? Uh, zero is, is uh, centigrade or Celsius is quite cold. Um, decreasing cell temperature increases voltage. Okay, that's what it's doing. That's important because um, as it gets colder, you may be in a situation where you can over-voltage stuff, and you don't want to do that, especially you, don't, you especially don't want to over-voltage your inverter. Um, slightly decreases current, so you can see coming down very slightly over here, and results in a net increase in power. So it's coming over here, and the knee is coming out even farther, creating more power. So, what is that telling us? The hotter it is, it's gonna, there's going to be less power. Okay, the colder it is, there's going to be more power. Solar modules, even though they're out in the sunlight, I realize that, and especially in the summertime, there's a lot more irradiance. So things can get a little bit relative there if you really think about that. Uh, but when we're in extreme cold, we've got a lot of good sunlight, uh, we're going to get a lot of power out of that system, and we need to be prepared for what happens to voltage there. That's, that's super important. All right, continuing on. Um, so what we have here is a solar panel module label, right? And basically it's the performance ratings and some of the information that's on there. And basically, guess what? It's the stuff that's on the IV curve, right? They just say it a little bit differently. Max power, we know that what that is. Um, they call it, we call it uh, power PMP, power max power sometimes. Here they call it Pmax. It's really the same thing, it doesn't make much difference. VOC and IOC are the same, and then here they call it Vmax and then Imax. Understand that the, the total wattage of this solar panel comes from a product of uh, the voltage, the Vmax, and in this case, the Imax right here. And those are those two points that create that knee um, on the IV curve. So, Multiply these two together, this is 29.28 times 7 point, I believe it's 6.6, equals to about 224 watts 
um, that's very important uh, to realize how the actual power is being um, figured out on, on a module. Okay? And then of course, there's other stuff on here that's of significance. It says they've got a plus or minus 10, this says plus 10 and minus 10 percentage that you might be in the um, overall power area and, and, and manufacturers have their specifications that, that they're, all, they're all quite similar to that. Okay. Um, all right, so let's dive right into the uh, NABCEP uh, sample question, okay? Using the information on the module label on the previous slide that, that I just showed you, what is the voltage of a series string of 10 modules, okay? Here's how we run the calculation. We're using uh, VOC, all right? Um, that's really important because you notice what can happen when it gets really cold. Um, the the, the max voltage could actually be um, beyond that point on the IV curve and start to go towards VOC and if it starts to move towards VOC we can over voltage things and that's why when we're figuring out string sizes using especially using a string inverter um, we need to make sure that we're using uh, the VOC on there okay uh, and in this case it's simple math um, multiply that uh, VOC by the 10 modules and then uh, you simply get uh, 366 volts um, which is easy math no problem just a simple algebraic equation um, and then again here like I, I noted you got to be careful not to, to over voltage and invert it. okay simple problem let's move on to uh, one that's a little more complex um, alright this one says using the information on the module label uh, how many modules can be used in one series string for a residence and this is not factoring uh, any temperature coefficient or anything like that okay? well, that, that gets into deeper math um, and uh, more study and uh, Jim Dunlop's book really goes uh, into uh, calculations about that and it, and it does a fantastic job with it so that, that's, it's a good read for that as well because you may have questions like that on the NAPSET exam but anyways let's solve this so the answer here, 600 volts. You might be saying, where the heck does that come from? Well, 600 volts is the maximum voltage allowed on residential projects, okay? Uh, so dead giveaway here is uh, when I see residents there, I'm like, okay, I get it now. Um, some commercial projects allow up to 1,000 volts um, in those particular systems. Uh, but in this particular case, we're talking about residential, so it's 600 volts. Uh, now, what we're going to do here is we're going to do a division problem and we're taking 600 volts and we're dividing it by the VOC, which is 36.6 volts, and it ends up being 16.39 modules. Well, you know we can't have uh, a quarter module or 0.39 module, it ain't going to work. So the answer in this case, of course, is we would be able to um, put 16 modules in parallel and still fall under the 600 volts um, uh, situation for uh, working with the inverter. Okay, and the same thing right here. We don't want to over voltage the inverter. So we're looking at the inverter uh, manufacturer specifications. Usually on the side of a string inverter, it says what the maximum voltage uh, it can possibly handle. Sometimes it's it's it, it'll only handle up to 550 volts. So we need to uh, we certainly need to keep that in mind. Okay. Um, and reading those labels, reading the instructions in solar is, is uh, super important for us. Uh, and having an understanding of the equipment is, is very important for us uh, as well. So, I think that does it. Yep. So, thank you so much uh, for watching today. And uh, we have now covered all four of the main points that you need to know for the NAPSEP exam. But guess what? I got a, a, a little bonus for you and we're going to uh, do one more video in regards to studying for the NABSEP exam. Thanks again for watching. Uh, check out my website, solarprofessor.info.